Super Mario Bros. Wonder is a near flawless game, but there is one certain level that seemingly breaks Nintendo's own rules for how they're supposed to design a Mario game. And this level kinda sticks out like a sore thumb because of it. Today, we're taking a look at how Nintendo can still make a new Mario game full of the best level design in the industry almost 40 years after the original game, and what happens when they don't follow their own advice. Just a heads up, there are some light spoilers for Super Mario Bros. Wonder in this video. Some of the footage that I use is from official trailers shown prior to release, but I will also show footage detailing a couple of levels from later in the game. If you still haven't had a chance to play through it, please do, first of all, because it's dope, but also just be warned in case you want to go in blind. Ready? Let's go! I thoroughly enjoyed my playthrough of Mario Wonder. Almost every level in the game is a wonderful example of how to make a good level, and I think this game is going to be studied for years to come. But one level, I think, might be studied for a different reason, and that level is Nosher Lair. In it, you meet a never-before-seen enemy called a Nosher. It's a round little dude with wings and big ol' teeth. It's a really interesting enemy because it actually destroys certain elements of the stage, something you wouldn't see from a common Goomba or Koopa. It flies quickly in a straight line, and as soon as it arrives at a block or a coin, it pauses to gobble it up whole before it resumes its flight. And this is super interesting. When I figured out how it worked, I thought that it could easily make for a very exciting level. The terrain can fall apart in complex yet predictable ways, or maybe you have to scramble to reach a certain block before the nosher does. It's a very smart design, but it's not perfect. In fact, this level actually struck me as easily the worst level in the game. But to understand why, we first need to ask, how does Nintendo design a level anyway? Well, they use an outline. And we know this from a wonderful interview that GameDeveloper.com did with Koichi Hayashida back in 2015. He served as director for several Mario games and was also a game designer on Mario Wonder. In the interview, he describes a four-step process to efficiently introduce a new gameplay concept to the player. This process is called Kishotenketsu, if I'm pronouncing it correctly at least. It goes something like this. First, the level introduces a new concept in a safe environment that the player can't really fail in. For example, in the level Scram Skedaddlers, you immediately see a skedaddler when the level starts, and it shoots an acorn high above your character. Even if you jump from your starting position, you won't get hit by it. As you approach, you see that the skedaddler runs away. Now you're either too high for it to hit you again, or on the low path, you see that the acorn can destroy yellow barrels but that barrel also protects you from the acorn as well. Before you're placed in immediate danger, the structure of the level already taught you how this new enemy works. Once you're comfortable with a new concept, step two is to establish the concept in practice. This necessitates a level of risk so that the player now has to actually apply their understanding of the concept. Back to our example, the level presents another skedaddler that attacks you as well, but this time, there's a little less protection, so you actually have to respond. Step three is the twist. Now that you understand the concept, the game makes a challenging but also novel twist on the idea. The brilliance of this is that you've already demonstrated your competence, so even though it's in a new context, you can still pick up on the mechanics of what's happening. Our example does this by presenting a skedaddler that is carrying a 10 flower coin. You haven't seen one carry anything yet, but you know you want that coin and you can see that it's following the skedaddler. So you know that to get the coin, you have to chase it just like the other skedaddlers before it. And step four is the satisfying conclusion. The key here is that it gives you the opportunity to express your mastery of the concept. Our example has a wonderful conclusion. First, it presents another skedaddler that is carrying this level's wonder flower. Once you reach it, dozens of superstars start raining from the sky. A superstar makes you invincible for several seconds, giving you the freedom to rush ahead without concern for your safety. However, you'll run into several skedaddlers, all of whom are carrying precious flower coins, so you're rewarded for each skedaddler you catch up with. The level then wraps up with a staircase that leads to the top of the flagpole, marking the end of the level. You're rewarded for reaching the very top of the flagpole, but the staircase is made out of those same yellow barrels from before and a skedaddler is already about to shoot another acorn, destroying the staircase. By now, you know how this works, so hopefully you respond quickly enough to climb the staircase before it's gone and complete the level in style. Ah! 
This is a very neat, very smart method that allows developers to constantly introduce new, fresh ideas into their game, while simultaneously onboarding the player every time so that it's never confusing. Mario Wonder makes great use of this method, and that's a big reason why its levels feel so good to play. Which brings us back to our exception, Nosher Layer. This level doesn't quite follow the Kisho Tenketsu method as well as it could. As soon as the level starts, you see two Noshers already beginning to eat blocks and coins. You actually can't even reach those coins fast enough to collect them before they're gone. But immediately in front of your character is also a type of block that, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it hasn't been seen in another level yet. And it turns out that this block is really just a solid platform, and it just looks different to provide some visual clarity to the Nosher's destruction. Fair enough. So there are not one, but two Noshers that are already eating the level before you can even assess what's going on. As you continue, coins and even a precious item block are eaten, and there are three more Noshers on the way. One of them eats a platform above you, dropping a Goomba on top of you. You haven't really had an opportunity to stomp on one of these things yet, and there's already four enemies at once about to collide with you. So the level already messed up step one. It presents multiple Noshers very quickly, pulling your attention in multiple different directions, which is not good for introducing an inherently chaotic new mechanic. It also springs a dangerous trap on you almost immediately. There's no breathing room to learn the new mechanic before being put in danger. This continues throughout the level with Noshers destroying flower coins and other goodies at a rapid pace. The worst part is later in the level when a glowing item block appears in the midst of five different Noshers, meaning your attention is split between five different danger points. This item block contains a Wonder Flower, which I didn't even realize on my first playthrough because it only takes about five seconds until it's gobbled up. Like I mentioned earlier, I actually like that idea, but it wasn't balanced well enough for it to be interesting. I was still assessing the situation by the time it disappeared. The intensity was just a bit overtuned. What's the point of having an intense moment like that if you don't even realize it until it's over? The whole level was kind of a mess, in my opinion. And don't get me wrong, I've got nothing against chaotic level design. Chaos is a very powerful technique to make a memorable and exciting level, but there should be counterplay. Those little dudes move quick, and once they eat something, it's gone until you restart the level. I actually really like the Noshers in theory, but the level wasn't balanced very well. And yet, that's not even the worst sin that this level commits, because its design is proactively unfun. What do I mean by that? Think of it this way. The fun of Mario is primarily in its movement and level design. That's what makes a platformer. It's fun to hit blocks and see what pops out. It's fun to collect goodies. It's fun to finesse your way through an obstacle course. Noshers take away all of that. The coins you want to collect? Gone. The blocks that hide a cool little secret? Not yours. The intricate obstacle course? What intricate obstacle course? It's gone before you can even scope it out. They actively get rid of what makes Mario fun to play. This is what I call a cannibalistic mechanic. And I have no idea if there's already a term for this, so please let me know if there is. A cannibalistic mechanic is a mechanic that by design works contrary to what makes a game fun. One of the most well-known examples of this would be the zoner archetype in fighting games. The fun of fighting games is using your character's tools to outplay an opponent with roughly equal, though usually different tools, to catch them off guard and land big flashy attacks as your reward. This usually means getting in close enough to hit them and setting up a combo. Some characters are what's called a zoner, a character whose tools are meant to keep distance from the opponent. And sometimes this turns into an awkward, frustrating game of keep away instead of an adrenaline-fueled fistfight. Some zoners can feel very deflating to play as and play against because of this, and are often cannibalistic design because their nature goes against how the rest of the game was designed to be played. Now, this isn't always a bad thing. Though the reputation exists for a reason, some zoners are very well designed. A cannibalistic mechanic can be a great way to add some strong variety to a game. It's just really hard to do because of the inherent risk of making the game less fun. In Mario Wonder's case, Noshers take away the fun parts of a level, which could be interesting, but the level doesn't do a great job of equipping you for that counterplay. The only way to really get this stuff is to make a mad dash for it before you can assess the situation, which typically isn't the right move in a Mario level. It goes against my past 10 hours of playing Mario Wonder and my past 20 years of playing all the other Mario games. But mad dash levels can be really good. 
One of my favorite levels in Mario Wonder is Wiggler Race Spelunking, which is literally a race. Obviously, you're supposed to rush ahead. It's clearly signposted by the context and the level design. It's presented with just the right balance of chaos and predictability so that the player gets that hectic mad dash experience while also having just enough room to react to those obstacles, even at a fast pace. For me, this level was definitely more challenging than Nosher Layer. It certainly took me more tries to complete it, but even though it was more challenging than a level that I found kind of frustrating, it was actually more fun because the challenge was balanced properly. All that said, Nosher Layer still isn't a terrible level, and it is creative. It just didn't flow nearly as well as most of the other levels in the game. And the contrast is so stark because Mario Wonder has so many wonderful levels. I still like the idea of enemies that can destroy blocks and coins, but they kinda went overboard. Introducing any new mechanic too quickly is dangerous, and showing me coins just to tell me that I can't get them kinda defeats the point of having coins, even if you are trying to teach me how your new enemy works. These things left the level feeling a bit deflated, but I'll admit the level was a lot more fun on my second playthrough. Now that I knew some key points where the Noshers would strike, I preemptively ran for those spots and the level became a lot more interesting to play. Maybe if Noshers were like 10-20% to 20 slower, or they had to do a little animation before they start flying, or even if the level was just built in a way that gave you a little more breathing room to absorb some visual stimuli before monsters eat your money, it could have flowed a lot better. But hey, one awkward level in the midst of dozens of excellent ones? I'll take it. And maybe you had a different experience with the level. To me, it stuck out, but everyone's experiences are unique, and maybe some people really liked this level. If that's you, I'd love to hear your take in the comments. If it's not, I'd love to feel some validation by seeing anonymous people agree with my ultimately inconsequential opinions. Either way, I really appreciate you watching the video and of course, liking, subscribing, and sharing. I love you all and God bless.